welcome to the first episode of Behind the Lens with Mr. Poon. I'm glad to have you guys come along. Very happy to get this off the ground, do a little promotion for ourselves, do a little promotion for other filmmakers and musicians, and uh, whatever gets thrown our way. This week uh, on Behind the Lens, we're going to have an exclusive interview with Christopher Mann, who's an actor that we've worked with in the past, and he's known for uh, many films and different TV shows, such as Law and Order, uh, The Wire, Jersey Justice, Duplicity, and even our own Bully. Um, I think he's done an excellent job in a lot of his work, and I think he's an interesting person to interview, so we're going to have him on board this uh, week. Uh, after that, we're going to have a little visit from the Dollar Store Samurai. He's going to be doing a exclusive game review for uh, Dead Space 2, which will be uh, pretty cool, I'm sure. Uh, we're going to show a little short film from GLK Productions that's uh, it's about seven minutes long. We try to keep everything under five minutes, but since we're doing our first episode, we're going to bend the rules a little bit. But make sure you guys submit uh, anything you got out there, which is a short film or something interesting for our future episodes. And after that, maybe we'll show a little music video from yours truly, Mr. Putin. Stay tuned. Okay, uh, we're in the <laughs> studio with Christopher Mann, actor extraordinaire. Oh, wait a minute, man. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't minute. know you were going there with it, but <laughs> it's just me, dude. <laughs> just Christopher Mann. Absolutely. <laughs> um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, well, as Mr. Grillo just stated, I'm an actor from the uh, Philadelphia area. I've uh, been, uh, I guess, dibbling and dabbling in this industry for close to 20 years now, which is scary to say. Um, uh, done some things luckily. I've uh, done a lot of local things here, uh, independent films, worked with Mr. Grillo as well. <laughs> as, as well and um, done some major productions also with George Clooney and Duplicity and and um, Michael Clayton, well, that's at dead backwards. Michael Clayton was George, was George Clooney. Duplicity was Clive Owens. And then, uh, as a matter of fact, I have a couple things coming up this year. As a matter of fact, I have a scene with uh, Steve Martin in the big year, and another another young up and coming actor, uh, Toby Regba, who's in the um, Harry Potter, uh, I guess you call it series now. Right. He's in the the one that's out now, and he'll be in the actual next the next one that follows in the uh, sequels. You know, so he's he's up and coming. So I did some work with him in a movie called uh, Someday This Pain Will Be Useful to You, which actually will be released in Italy first. Cool. Yeah. All right. How was it working for? I guess it's been a decade now. You've been on Law and Order. Yeah, yeah. Law and Order is always fun to work on, especially uh, special victims. You know, I like that one in particular. But I've worked on Criminal Intent as well. Why do you like that one better? Well, I just, <laughs> I, well I've worked with uh, Chris Maloney and Mariska Hargitay uh, at least three times now. So I guess, you know, you get to know them. And then the more you get to know them, they, you know, when you get to set, it's a little more friendlier. You know, everybody kind of, you know, they kind of, they're familiar with seeing you when you come on the set. So you can work off each other a little bit more that way too. A, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even, even when you're not even working, like, you know, in between the takes, you know, Chris Maloney's a clown, man. He's a funny guy to be around. So, you know, it kind of makes the day kind of go easy, man. One of my favorite actors, Clive Owen, you've gotten to work with in Duplicity. Yeah, I did. How is Clive in person? Clive, he's real cool, dude. You know, his, his European style and the whole nine. He's real, you know, real mellow. Not, not, nothing over the top with him. You know, what I mean, he's, you know, uh, <coughs> um, Tony Gilroy introduced us on the set because you know I'm doing the scene with him, and whatnot, and uh, you know, he's just real. Like I said, he's just real mellow. It's like, hey, how are we? You know. Not he's got a real deep voice, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. He does. He has a deep voice, and he's, he's just, he's just, you know, I don't know. It's just, I, I've met some people like that before. He's just real mellow, nice guy, you know, no, <laughs> no barriers. You know, what I mean, he, he can't have barriers as an actor anyway. I mean, you have to be open to, you know, the people you're working with. But um, he was real cool, man. You know, just mellow kind of cat. Okay, and Michael Clayton, you also yeah. got to work with George Clooney. George Clooney's not one of my favorite actors, but um, he's definitely done a really good body of work. Yeah. Why don't you tell us a little bit about working with George Clooney? George Clooney, I, you know, I'm, I've worked with quite a few people, and I'm and very nice people and, 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 you know, open, but <coughs> personally, George Clooney is probably the coolest person I ever worked with. Really? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, George... <laughs> I get choked up talking about this because uh, we were working on uh, Michael Clayton and um, I only had two, I had two day two day shoot on there with him and we were working on a scene and 
before we did the scene, we were at lunch talking, you know, we were talking just personal stuff, a family and whatnot, you know, I showed him the kids on the phone and everything. <clears throat> so this particular part of the scene wasn't scripted, so he said, I tell you what, you know, show me the, you know, open up the phone, show me the kids, and we'll ad-lib this whole thing, you know, we're going through the whole thing. <clears throat> so we went and did it, and then we had to come back to shoot, to shoot another part of the scene later, and in between that, I got a call that my, my uh, brother passed away. Oh. And he knew I was going to be there that day because I talked to my brother, you know, and told him, hey, yeah, I'm going to be on the set, you know, da, da, da. And um, that really messed me up. You know, I had, that was the last thing I expected to hear. And um, so I had to tell, you know, I had one of the PAs go tell uh, Tony Gilroy and, and, and George Clooney, you know, what happened. And George actually came out to me and said, look, if you want to go home, he said, I'll just wrap this up for the day. We can come back and shoot this whole thing another day. Me? Right. Right. Dude, are you kidding me? You oh, know that's what I mean? Cool, man. Yeah, so you know, when it comes to real people, man, this this guy, you know, when I say he's a real dude, man, he's 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 all that. Cool. Well, we'll give it. We'll give George a thumbs we up. We gotta give him a thumbs up, man. Definitely. Yeah. Oh. All right. Um, as we know, you worked on the show Heroes. Yeah. I did. Okay, you did a little uh, small role in that, I believe, as a security officer. Yeah, I did. It was um. What, what do they call them? Is it the SATs or whatever? Like the guards at the airport. Whatever right. they are, yeah, security at the airport, yeah. I did that. What happened to Heroes? <laughs> it wasn't because of me, dude. <laughs> well, right. That's what you're are, getting at. Are we blaming? Are we blaming? <laughs> no, my role was this small, baby. If Dad no, it, did it, it wasn't going to last anyway. Okay. Heroes, <laughs> Heroes was a show that took off out of the gate. Mm -hmm. Big. Bam. Right off. The, I mean, first two episodes. I mean, it was it, huge. It was major. It really was. Two seasons later, it's done. What happened? I have no clue, man. It had a short fuse, I guess. Yeah, man. man. It, poof, that was it. Why do you think you get cast as a cop so much? I, you, I hate that. I don't know, man. I, I think... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it's just the, you know the, the kind of close cut. You know, I, I don't usually wear this that often. A little, you know, the little scraggly thing. So, I think maybe just a clean cut to me, and then maybe just my build so much. You know, what I mean, I'm not. You're just too smooth. Maybe that's it. Yeah, you can be a smooth. You can be smooth pimp too, baby. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But um, that is, is, and it's, I, yeah. well, I guess you know it's funny because I was when I was a kid, I used to play a cop all the time. I had an uncle. Down in Delaware, Some and every, things never changed. Every time I went to his house, you know, it was always cops and robbers, and I was always the cop, you know. But it was, you know, it was, I was a kid, man. I, was, I literally hit minimum one in three or four years. Maybe old. people just see that in you. I guess you know what I mean. Big question. It's 2011. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that roles for black men mm -hmm. are too typecast? Uh. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's it's well. First of all, it's not that many roles anyway. You know, there's not that many roles. I I swear. I, I, I man, I like I look at I watch the shows that are out now, and and every once in a while, you know, I might see an old breakdown that that came out maybe a year or so ago because you know they come out every week, but we you can't you can't really get your hands on them. But every once in a while, you'll see an old breakdown. I look at the breakdown, they'll have it listed, and you look at the breakdown, and it might be like ten projects on there. And out of all those 10 projects, there may be one or two roles out of all 10 of those that I might fit into. You know? And, 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 it's, and it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's really crazy. Now, this is like, to me, it's like, to me, it's like from another perspective. Because I'm, I'm, when I read the paper, you know, they'll say, they'll say like, they'll say uh, Asian, or they may say Mexican or Latino, African American. But there may be some breakdowns where they won't say anything. It won't have any spe specific ethnicity. And you already know it. So it means Caucasian. It means Caucasian. Yeah, they don't. They don't have to say them. They would. They have to say everybody else. So you already know. You know what I mean? This is right there. You know. So it's like wow. Unspecified means white guy. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Why don't you have Denzel's career? Ooh, that's a good question. Well, maybe because. We weren't swapped at birth. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. That's a good question. Um, I well, think this question goes out to any actor. Why am I here? And why is he and there? And why is he there? Right, right, right. And that's a really good question. I don't know. I do not know what hand of fate has brought me to this point and not to that point and why I was born in Chester and not New York. You know what I mean? Why... 
My mom died when I was 13, and my dad died before I was 40, and both of my brothers are gone already. I don't, you know, why? How, why? why does that happen? Yeah, why are these, yeah, what right. are the reasons for this? Right, right. And I couldn't answer that question. I wish I could. I wish I knew how to direct myself in the path that I wanted to be on so I could be in that position. You know, I'm trying, you know, I'm doing what I can, but. Is it luck? Is it destiny? Right, right. What is it? What is it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, will I, will I, will I, you know, 10 years from now, will I be at this spot still saying, boy, I sure can't wait till I get that break, or, you know, will I go, you know, to the grave thinking the same thing all the way there? Think you of know? the millions of people who ask the same question. Exactly. Right. How much longer will you act? Uh, sometimes I'm surprised I'm still doing it now. Uh, I don't know. I really don't, that's the honest answer. I, I, there have been days I said, I'm done. I've hung it up, pow. And then you know, the wife, you can't stop now. You're too far, you've done too much, you've done this, da da da. Okay, all right, I'll do a little longer. A few months later, I'm hanging, I'm hanging it up. Bring, phone rings, I got all this for you. Oh. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, like, it's like some, a drug. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Do you feel that school makes people better actors? No, no. I think I think school. Well, from what I see, anyway, the school gives more theory, but life experience is is something that you can't teach. You know what I mean? A, a human emotion, being in the moment, feeling the moment, and I've had a lot of issues in my life that, that I think that I could draw back off of. So I I always believe if life gives you lemons, you got to make lemonade with it. Absolutely. All right. Besides myself, mm -hmm. which indie director do you see the most promise from? Mm -hmm. That's good. That's really good. I like that. That's a good question. Um, wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, because uh, you, you're definitely you're, you're here, and there's a couple. I mean, I mean I, mean, I work with John Hunt. John Hunt, I think John Hunt has, has some promise in his future. He's, he's, he's a dedicated guy, and he works hard on his career. Very dedicated. Very dedicated, very. I, I'm serious, John Hunt's great. Um, there's another young guy named Robert Golfin, who I've done, I just did a short with him also. He's a very, he's deep. This guy is, you know, matter of fact, he was the script supervisor on White Men Can't Rap. But this guy is, you know what I mean, he's, like, you know, he's on everything, man. You can't miss a beat, man. That's good. Yeah, I, I know. I, but I, Attention but I, to detail. Oh, man. I'm, I'm, uh, he's he's relentless with it, you know. But I like it. That's like, let's do this, you know what I mean? So I, I see <laughs> I see things in, in, in a few. Oh, there's another guy, another guy, too. Is that, one more person, one more person. This guy named Julius Ona. I worked with him. He um, I did a, um, a short called The Boundary. It was about a... Um, uh, border patrol officer and we had uh, stopped this guy on the border of Canada in, in Detroit in Michigan and uh, he was from the Middle East and you know we I had to give him an interrogation that was a really nice piece too this guy's he's he's good too he's a, another good uh, up-and-coming uh, director writer so yes you, know, you guys is some stiff competition man cool but uh, but what I see what is now, now what I really see like out of you I gotta give you your props because you work. You work with a ten thousand dollar budget, and you did something with ten thousand dollars. I've seen some people would never be able to get done with that 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 little bit of money. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. You're, well, like you, you're a genius. I come from a. <laughs> I come from a poor. <coughs> okay. Somewhat poor. I don't, I'm maybe not as as as, as uh, humble of a beginning as yourself, but mm -hmm. I'm a Kensington kid. Okay. You know. All right. Sort of crawled out of the uh, the depths of this city. I hear you. I hear you. So I've learned how to use that. Yeah, yeah. Well, you do a good job, man. Thank you. Seriously. Somebody give you some money, man. It's all over. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to this man. Yeah, for sure. What do you think the future of filmmaking is? Wow. Technology has changed the whole game. Yes, it has. It has changed the whole game. And, and the more intense it gets i mean the more it's not going to stop it's, it's actually becoming so much easier to produce now i mean the cost is is, is come down so much it's, it's ridiculous don't we know it. um yeah yeah and 
Hollywood is in trouble. <laughs> yes, it is. To be totally honest. And they know it. Yeah. All right. Here's our last question of the uh -oh. evening. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Christopher Mann, where do you see yourself in five more years? <sighs> Idealistically. Idealistically, dreaming wise, realistically. Yeah. Five years from now, I sh I see myself, or I'd like to see myself. I I see myself. However, you want to verbalize it. You can give me every answer where you'd like to be, where you, where think, you think you might be, yeah, where you yeah. could be. Yeah, where I could be is probably a, the best. I guess I could be uh, a series regular on a top ten. TV show and on a major network doing maybe two two films maybe in the hiatus of the of the series season and running that for another five years after that it's honest. <laughs> you know that's, that's where I can see myself in, in five years cool yeah. well Thank you for uh, giving me this interview. Oh, absolutely. It was great having you. Oh, man, it's a pleasure. Man. I'm, glad, I'm actually honored that you had me you know, to be your first guest, man. This is behind the lens. Well, let's, uh, let's hope we have many more guests on Behind the Lens with Mr. Absolutely. Putin. Absolutely. And uh, just make sure you email potentpictures at live.com to uh, get your request in to have an interview done, and uh, maybe we'll get you into the studio. Yeah, he'll do it. Trust me. See you, everybody. <laughs> This week's game review by me, Dollar Store Samurai. Dead Space 2. Dead Space 2. Start with a man at darker hallways. Summer times are too dark for Samurai to see. Dead Space 2's claustrophobia raises tension very high. This game gives very suspenseful feeling, even for Samurai. Isaac finds himself awakened from a coma upon the space station sprawl. Isaac discovers, just like the Ishimura, the sprawl is also infested by the Nakamorphs. Isaac's mission to unlock the secrets in this new dark world. Oh, I'm so distracted by all the pretty lights. Players of the original Dead Space will remember the save points. These have not changed. And as before, the store, very expensive. Dollar Store Samurai not have enough money to buy most things in the store. Also, like the original Dead Space, is the upgrade bench. But Dallas Store Samurai never find enough notes to make it worthwhile to go into it. I... Dallas Store Samurai say, future very expensive. Visceral Games did not go on the cheap with the action and the fighting. And you know, Samurai love to do battle. Samurai, chop up a necromorph like a sushi? But at some times, even a samurai don't have the best of defense. I don't like those little guys. Some of the new things in Dead Space 2 are like Callable Tunnel, where you make a shortcut. Zero Gravity, where you can now fly. Samurai like this. Just to make sure you don't get hit. I said, look out! You will also have the power to hack the equipment. This was not in the original Dead Space, but be careful! Ouch! Remember kids, never try this at home! Dead Space 2 is non-stop action from beginning to end. Constant fighting and battles make a dollar store samurai very happy. Samurai not know why Nako was so angry. Maybe they are no longer have a penis. 
Sunday in the month. You cannot stop us, am I? Samurai keep that space too. Five katana blade. Is it good last night? Yeah. Come on, eat up. I gotta get off to school soon. Don't forget your lunch today, okay? Well, Daddy, where are you going to paint today? Well, I think I'm going to go to the art store and uh, take a walk through the park. Guess what? <laughs> Miss Marshall said we're going to paint dinosaurs in our class. Oh, wow. I'm going to be an artist just like you. <laughs> well, the best piece of art I ever created was you, sweetheart. Daddy, do you miss Mommy? Every time I look at you, sweetheart. Bye, Daddy. Wow, that's beautiful. The, the colors are fantastic. What kind of paint is that? This is a special paint, my friend. It's so lifelike, vivid. I, I love it. You think you might want to try this paint? Sure, but are you using that clear stuff to do that? It is the only color you need, my friends. It makes all of your creations come to life. I have to have some. How much? The paint is not for sale. Money is not the object with this paint. At least tell me what it's called. No, no, no. This is very special paint. It comes from a faraway place. It is called... It's called that? No, no, no. I just had some of these chicken stuck in my teeth. Look, bud, you gonna sell me this stuff or what? I tell you what, my friend. I let you have this one. Uh, you, you gotta let me give you something. I can't just take it off your head. I told you already. Your money is no good to me. But I take it anyway. But be very careful of the power that lies within this paint. What is the power of the paint? The power of the paint is... Can I help you? Hi. Uh, my car broke down and my cell phone died. Do you think I could use your phone? My name's Dan Crocker, by the way. I'm... 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 Ah! Ah! 
Oh, damn. Oh. I painted a girl. She showed up at my door. She showed up at my door because I painted her. Do you even know what that means? I know exactly what this means. You expecting anybody? No. Well, thanks again for joining us on Behind the Lens with Mr. Potent. We'd like to give a special thanks to Christopher Mann for letting us uh, give him a great interview. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, GLK Productions for submitting that short film to us. So I thought it was pretty cool. I also got to work on it. Wink, wink. Um, remember to visit MrPotent.com. And you can also check us out at Mr. Potent's channel on YouTube. And for any independent musicians out there or independent filmmakers, please submit your videos to us at potentpictures at live.com. We'd be happy to play whatever you got. Anything under five minutes. Hey, check us out next time. See ya.